I actually raced against him in 1991. I remember distinctively seeing his boat side by side. It used to be called Juana until they picked up a Dramamine sponsorship. Very appropriate for, the, for this type of racing. Whoa, the uh, Pier 57 going a little wide here to avoid the, uh, the green marker. As you can see from the wakes of the boat, the driver, John Morris, taking a bit of a right-hand turn there to avoid that marker. You know, these boats are going so fast and porpoising in this water at high speed, it's really hard to see some of these landmarks. And it's not surprising that he came down on that landmark uh, pretty quickly and taking a minor course correction to avoid it. A good choice. The alternate choice of hitting it, I wouldn't have recommend. There's a penalty actually assessed for hitting fixed landmarks on the course. And you can see them going into the turn here. Turn one, side by side, just clipping that buoy. You can't actually hit the buoy as long as you don't displace it. And Dramamine, with Jeff Harris, beautiful turn on the inside, holding his lane. Bruce Sperling keeping the speed of, a fa of the uh, Dramamine boat there. And Art Lilly on the outside trying to power through. Oh, and there's a crash! The fountains, the two fountains are out of control. They've crashed. Oh my goodness! Get over here, Steve. We got a crash. We got a crash. Two fountains have crashed into each other. Pier 57 fountain was out of control in the corner. Oh my goodness! I hope there's no no casualties down there. It looked terrible. The two boats here. One is upside down. Oh my goodness! This is very terrible. The two fountains here hitting one another. The Pier 57 boat with John Morris, unfortunately hooking in this turn and hitting. The Dramamine boat and turning it right over. Oh my goodness, I hope they're okay. That is very, very dangerous when those boats get out of control like that. Fountains do have a habit of hooking boats and that's uh, one of the characteristics. Very, very fast boats, but they do have a habit of hooking. And as we see down here, and the Tivoli boat running in third place has stopped to help out. I tell you, these, but these racers are very, very competitive, but they're the best of friends too. They're going to be down there helping out. You'll probably see one of, his, one of the guys jump in there and try and help one of his, one of his fellow racers, one of his competitors. You don't get, we don't get the type of friendship between racers in any other spot as you do in offshore. It's a real camaraderie between the, between the racers because a lot of times we're out there in the ocean by ourselves. And you can see here the boat stopping to help. Right there, the three boats which are in the lead, the Tivoli boat, B7, right there, and the Pier 57, right there, trying to help. And I think I see the, the helmets of the two boats, Bruce Sperling. I think I see the helmets. They got out of the boat. They're in those F-16 canopies. One of the one of the engine hatches, it looks like it's broken off the boat. And that's a beautiful boat. I hate to see it upside down like that. Actually, in, in the Key West race, End of last year, we almost got hit by a similar incident in the Sitgo Supergod Scarab. The fountain, uh, one of the fountains hooked, very similar as in this turn, and came right towards us out of control and just missed us. It's actually on the uh, video. It's, it's uh, quite exciting footage. Luckily, we were a little bit ahead of the fountain, and they didn't uh, T-bone us like uh, what happened here today. Very distressing to see this happen here. Again, I'm looking for, I think I see the two I think I see the two orange helmets of the two uh, racers. I think they're okay. They must have got out of those F-16 canopies and swum out upside down. And of course, these uh, APBA ensures that these racers actually have training. What they, they call it a dunk test, which is mandatory to all racers. And they do this in a swimming pool, simulating the condition which just happened here when a boat goes upside down. They rock you backwards and forwards in your race suit with the crash helmet on with the oxygen to your face they rack you backwards and forwards in this seat on floats in a swimming pool and then when you least expect it they tip you over and you have to get out of this uh, out of this um, construction the right way to prove that you could do it and you do that over and over again to make sure that when an accident does happen like this it's it's really a matter of of just um, practice and it's second nature when this happens because when you get hit like that on a race course, I mean, you don't know where you are. The boat probably spun around, went over, and now it's, it's sinking. The fountain is sinking. The nose of the boat is coming up. It's a real shame. That's one of the, uh, I raced against that boat for three or four years and to see it sinking on the race course here is a real shame.
but the good thing is the, the crew is safe. They look to be fine on the, on the rescue boat. APB-8 does a magnificent job of having uh, the rescue helicopter, they call it Angel One, flying over the boats. And when there's a problem, the divers go down. And um, right on the scene here were rescue boats to help them out. And you can see the nose of the boat. It's the only thing sticking up as that fountain sinks to the bottom of the Baltimore Harbor here. What a shame. That was a beautiful boat. And two of the best competitors there, Bruce Burling and Jeff Harris. Hopefully they can hate they can get a line on that fountain before it sinks to the bottom. I think they will. Usually the air traps in the nose of the boat and keeps it just marginally afloat. But that's an awful lot of work to that boat that's got to be done now. Basically got to be pulled out. The engines have got to be rebuilt. The drives have got to be rebuilt. The wire harness has got to be replaced. The steering pumps, I mean, it's a whole re-rigging of a boat. A very expensive... Uh, very expensive accident here for the team. But the most important thing is it looks like the driver and throttle men are safe. I think I can see their helmets on the uh, sitting there and on the rescue boat. But again, that's, we got you doing a good deal. that's uh, B-28, the Dramamine Fountain there, sinking on the bottom of Baltimore Harbor. In the background, we still have a, a Factory One race going on. Hope they can see the uh, impediments on the course. It looks like the other fountain is being towed off as well. That's probably sustained some damage from an accident. Same here. Yeah, they're the, they're the, uh, they're getting the races there. Looks like they're still in the water. We're gonna try and get them into the, the rescue boat. They're floating on the surface there. God, I hope they're okay. It looks like they're swimming back to the, the bigger rescue boat. It's difficult to make out exactly what is happening here. I'm trying to make out who that is that has been brought on to the, the big uh, rescue boat, the big Coast Guard boat there, laying on his back. It looks like Bruce Sperling. It looks like Bruce Sperling. Looking okay. He's waving his hands. Looks like he's having a pretty good time down there. The divers in the water assisting him there. And if we can see what's happening to the, the boat, the race boat. Again, it's, they're going to try. They've got a line attached to it. Great. B-28, the Dremming Fountain. Looks like they've attached a line, line to it to stop it from sinking to the bottom of the Baltimore Harbor here. That's a beautiful boat, very competitive race team with Bruce Sperling. The boat owned by Craig Lapine. I hope he's not here today <laughs> to see this, this bad news of his boat uh, being crashed into and sinking. Really is, a, really is unfortunate when this happens, when you get such great races like this. But the, the, uh, you don't get any more experienced racer than Art Lilly in, in, um, in the um, Pier 57 boat which looked to me like it, it hooked in a turn, turn two, hooked pretty badly, and just T-boned the Dramamine boat, and uh, just rolled it right over. And both boats, both the fountain boats are damaged here. They're running neck and neck. As I say, you certainly don't get any more experienced crew than the crew of Dramamine boat, and the crew of the 57 fountain with Art Lilly in the boat. And what's great to see, though, is that the um, Jamie Coates and Jeff Harris in a Tivoli boat pulling off right away to, to help their, their uh, fellow racers there, right on site, sacrificing their, their, um, their race to go and help their, their uh, competitors. And actually, APBA has a rule to really encourage this as well. And what that rule is, is that if you pull over to stop a boat which has had a problem, then you actually retain your position at that point in time when you pull off. So Tivoli, it'll be interesting to actually see what position they give Tivoli because it was running in third place. And the two boats which caused the accident are running first and second. So the Tivoli boat should get first place because it would have gone 
pass for two boats in first and second place which hit each other the two fountains which crashed and um, Tivoli will have taken first place and will retain that first place even though it pulled off to help the fellow competitors there the Tivoli boat still down there waiting to see if it can help very exciting accident to watch from a spectator's point of view but no fun at all I can tell you from a racer's point of view and actually very distressing for myself as a racer to see that happen four guys two guys in the um, 57 pier 57 fountain Art Lilly and Jeff Morris and David Morris John Morris beg your pardon and Jamie Coates and Jeff Harris in the Tivoli both both fountains It sure looks like everyone is okay there from, from 1,500 feet up in the air here in the Channel 15 helicopter. And they do seem to have got some good lines attached to the, the B-28 fountain boat, the Dramamine fountain. Just the nose of a the boat, they got the, the lines attached to the fountain just in time before it sank to the bottom. And the other one, the Pier 57 boat, again a fountain has been towed away after this crash. It's an unlucky race for fountains, I have to say. With last year, Reggie Fountain setting his boat on fire on the third lap when we were racing deck to deck. Reggie Fountain racing actually Actually, it's looking like the other fountain is sinking. It looks like, looks like the Pier 57 fountain is sinking now. It looks like the back end of the boat is taking on water pretty badly. I'm pretty sure the uh, Art Lilly and John Morris are taking off the boat, but it looks like that fountain is sinking also. They're trying to get some speed up. You can see the, the tugboat, the huge belches of smoke coming out to try and get some speed up to stop it from sinking. But you can see the back of a boat. Look at that! Look at that boat. You can see it absolutely trashed, just falling apart. Of course, these boats are very light, very light and very delicate. And you get, a, as I mentioned, the weight of this boat about 9,000 pounds. We're really trying to increase the weight of this class to make the boats a little bit more stronger, a little bit more solid. Good. It looks like they got the boat back. The Play faster again. they tow that boat, the quicker the water will drain out of it and they'll start it from sinking. If they can sure get did. that boat back to shore, they'll probably salvage another fountain there. Everything. What a shame, what a shame. That was the boat which caught on fire last year out here with Reggie and his son racing the boat. Reggie was throttling the boat, Reggie Fountain himself, and his son Wyatt, I believe, Pat. was driving the boat. They actually, actually it's, uh, it was on the, provided some good footage, and the oh, good thing know. is no one was hurt. But uh, some pretty spectacular footage last year when the boat was just engulfed in huge black flames. And uh, red flames and a black smoke, actually. Quite a mark on the course. And they repaired that boat, put it back together, and it's racing here again this year. It must be jinxed. Taking a look on the uh, safety boats there. See if I can uh, see what's going on as we zoom down. I pray to God the guys are good. I see legs moving, which is a great sign. When you see legs moving, that's a real good sign. They're looking pretty good. APBA has some of the best uh, uh, medical crew on the planet. It's actually led by, by who we call Pop. Jim Poplin is the, uh, the head of the safety crew. They call them the stars. And this group of, of uh, divers, a medical crew, go from race to race with APB offshore to make sure that when an accident like this happens, you've got the very best of, of people on the scene. 
And as you'll see from the replay, if we get to see that, the, um, the APBA medical crew were on site right away. And that's why I race APBA, because uh, you can always count on the, the stars crew been there. They rescued me a couple of times in the past, and there's, there's nothing more, more uh, pleasing to see when you need it is seeing those guys. I mean, they, they do this pretty much voluntarily. They go around the country and provide this support. And you can imagine what it's like being in a, a wetsuit on these boats in a helicopter with the heat we have today. I mean, He's been a title sponsor of, of the series before and really puts a lot of, uh, gives a lot of support to these races. They're going to medevac the gentleman that's in the uh, rescue boat over here at Armstead Gardens. Homestead Gardens? I mean Armstead Park, Fort Armstead. Fort, um, I hear now that the um, one of the races out of the Grammy boat is going to be taken over to the, the hospital at Fort Armstead. Yeah, they're going to medevac him from Port Armstead to shock trauma. They're going to medevac him from Port Armstead to to uh, trauma. I'm sure that's just Copy a precaution. That, Steve. Appreciate that. They do do this. That uh, they take every precaution to make sure that um, I've been in the water myself, upside down, and I was. I thought I was fine, but you tell everybody, "Oh, I'm fine." But they 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 insist. Part of their routine is to get you out of a boat onto a stretcher and take you to uh, take you to a hospital to be checked out. And there's no sense arguing with them. I tried it myself. <laughs> you can tell them I'm fine, I'm fine. And they, uh, they, uh, they have to do that as part of our, our precautions, part of the safety standards that APBA has. APBA is a 96 year racing organization I really have this dialed down. I mean, there are accidents. Accidents happen in any form of racing. But APBA has really got down the safety aspects of this with the mandatory requirements of the race boats and also the, the STARS medical team led by Jim Poplin. Pop, as, as his friends call him. These guys are the best in the world. And one reason why I would never race in any other sanctioning body there was an accident last weekend in Deefield Beach, down in Florida. One of the boats went over several minutes before they got the divers to this boat. And a lot can happen in several minutes.